And so I grew up shooting, and, and ballistics was just a normal conversation at the dinner table. Well, we're in North Dakota, in Grand Forks, actually. This is like the last place, last stop, where we can get licenses. We made the mistake of going to Cabela's, and in the process, we actually crossed the river and ended up in Minnesota, at Cabela's, where they can't sell you licenses for North Dakota. That brings us back to our lovely home at Walmart. We're gonna go back here and try to buy a couple of licenses, and then go to camp. Follow signs for US 65 North, Mason City. A little bit of elbow grease. There just ain't nobody out here. So you're going with a southern accent for this portion of the video. Huh? What do you mean? That's my favorite one that you do. So. What are you talking about? Your accent. I don't, you guys think I do this on purpose. No, I, I know that you don't. Your destination is on the right. This must be it. Yeah, it looks pretty good actually. Looks like it's packed. No, we, we better can... batten down the hatches, boys. Let's get everything out of here. Put it by these windbreaks over here, these bushes. Yeah, those bushes. You know. We're in North Dakota, we got camp set up. We're in a city park. There's a basketball court right here, which is pretty sweet. I don't think anybody else is gonna be camping here. We're gonna get some shut eye and get up in the morning and start scouting this place. Hopefully show you some velvet bucks. I hope so. It's gonna be fun. Just coming up this, I don't know, it would be a level B road where we're from. It's just a pretty sketchy road, but it went back to a little shelter belt where there's some trees on some public, and we were just about to it driving through. Had private land fields on both sides, and a little buck jumped up. Dylan got some footage of that, said, Keep filming because there's probably going to be more here. Just bachelor groups are pretty normal this time of year, and sure enough, after, I don't know, probably 30 seconds, they held tight for. 20, yeah, the seconds. one buck, the biggest, he jumped up. He was right next to the little berm that we're on. Mm -hmm. And nobody and he was within 20 feet of the truck. He never even looked at us either. He just took off out of there. He heard something mm -hmm. or caught a whiff or it's something. It's so windy he didn't know. today. And like the, the road that we just drove down, you can tell nobody's drove down it all summer. Like none of the weeds are knocked down or anything. So it looks like there's this little low spot in the field where there's a variety of different weeds growing marked it on the map and I'd imagine they'll probably be back in there. It looks like they've been spending quite a bit of time in there this summer so far, or as of late at least, there's a bunch of stuff knocked down and some trails through there. So it's not like hardcore diversity. It's just the most subtle little, little thing. That's what we're keying in on at the moment. It's up. He was right, bedded right in the edge, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Film, see him, Dylan? Yep. He's headed back to the back. To the security cover. Yep. Where was he laying at, right in the edge? Where in here he jumped right up. Next to it. I think there, there could be a substantial animal in here. <laughs> <laughs> when you're out there and you're hunting substantial animals, you're gonna have to change your tactics up a bit. Looks like uh, this might be the end of the road here, boys. We're gonna go have a look. We're well, gonna walk to that corner, huh? see some deer side. I think the other side is going to be twice as good. I don't even know if I'd ever even come over here unless we see something real crazy. Just jumped a buck up on the way in here and we're, we're purposely trying to spook some of these deer because our plan is to hunt the back side of this little public piece. And as we get back here to the back of this ditch, we're going to quit bumping here in the next hundred yards or so. But we just got to figure out what's going on. And instead of just sitting out there and waiting, we're coming in here and walking through about half of the bedding area to at least try to figure out a pattern on what's going on. We got to the back of this cornfield though and you can see it's pretty heavily browsed in here. A lot more than the corn coming down back where the truck's parked. That little buck ran right around this corner so we're going to keep following him back here before it gets into the main part of the bedding area and then we'll back off because that's where we're planning to hunt. Warb and Dylan are up top there. I'm just walking along parallel on them. And that little buck that we saw was still in velvet. And this is fresh from this year. So that means there's another buck in here at least. Another big bed, really big bed here. Ooh, right there, big buck. There, going across. 
Not a big buck, a small buck. See him? Yep. You got him? Yep. sneaking along the back edge of this cornfield. Well, we swung around the corner. Jake is right below Dylan and I, and he signaled to us that he just bumped a buck and he found a fresh rub down there, I guess. Dylan and I swung around the corner. We saw a buck across the way there, almost in the exact spot that we picked to hunt. And that's, we're not wanting to go up in there, and I don't even know that we spooked that buck. He looked like I he was just so. moving. Yeah, he looked pretty calm. And then I stood up and looked over top of Dylan, and there's a nice hard antlered buck right below us. Dylan just filmed him for a minute or so and we dropped down and snuck back out of there. I'm going to mark his bed right here. We're going to come right back in here. Maybe even tomorrow evening. I could have walked up to him and got a shot. I was 40 yards when I first saw him, but like I, I, I'm wearing a red shirt and I wasn't trying to sneak up on anything. Red, red shirt and Crocs. Yep, Crocs. Good scouting boots. <laughs> These bucks we're running into today are bedded off of the side of this corn. There's this little drainage that runs all the way around the back of this corn and they're in these little pockets of trees like that. That's where Jake was finding those rubs. That's where we just bumped that buck out of and that's where we just filmed that buck that was just up browsing. Just little pockets of trees. When you're looking at a map, they're very, very small. Jake just found a bed up there. He's pointing to me. Yep. That's where they're at. A lot of people think that those bucks will just go out in the sea of corn like that. And in our experience, that's not the case. They tend to want to stay to these edges. And what a cornfield ultimately does is it creates a barrier for the deer. That's why all these deer are stacked into these little bitty bedding areas like that behind this corn. They're not out in the middle of it. Now, if there's a waterway or something like that that goes out in there, they may bed in that. But in this case, they've got this ditch back here with all these little patches of trees, lots of thick cover. They can be secluded back here from the roads. Nobody's ever gonna see them. It's a cool spot. We're gonna be back in here tomorrow probably to hunt. <laughs> all right, well, Greg and Grant and I just got to our camping spot. And as you can see, it takes a lot of stuff to pull this whole thing off. I don't know how they did this without the trucks and the camper. So this year is an upgrade and we're gonna try to get unpacked and then everybody's going out scouting and I'm gonna make some chili. Chomper's gonna hold down the fort. Yep. Greg is too Greg's, Greg's, mind, Greg's, Greg's always it. rolling. Oh, dang it. Nice one. Found, found a spot for sure. I'm gonna go check out some new spots now. We've been sitting in this chair for two days, right here, eating and looking through these. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, we saw all the bugs. I had to clean the, the entire swath of them off my windshield just to make it here safely, twice. We found a bunch of deer and a bunch of really good spots today. Good. Well, how many bucks have we seen? Six or seven bucks? We got uh, within bow range of two different bucks that we'd shoot. Yeah. And we're getting ready to go out this evening to see if we can spot some from the road. Tomorrow the season opens at noon. Be good to that truck now. All right, well, Grant and I are going for a walk this afternoon, about a three mile to five mile walk, depending on when it gets dark out and what we run into. but. I'm just curious to see what kind of deer sign we run into. I already came across a buck track on the way in right on the road. And uh, the guy we talked to actually said that this spot that we planned on going to was a good spot. So we just ran into a farmer on the road that cuts hay back in here. So 
Grant and I are going to get to walking and uh, we'll show you whatever we find, I guess. I didn't expect to find a scrape, but that's why we came over here. There's a big trail crossing. We're only 10 yards off the trail. They must be eating on the couple acorns that are falling. You can see them all up there yet, too. But it's all matted down through here. It's like either moose or elk tracks. They're too small to be a cow track and they're too big to be a deer track. So when we visited the headquarters or whatever today, they told us that this is the area that the elk are in. So I'd imagine that's what it is. Maybe we'll run into them. It'd be cool to see a elk before Zach and Ted even got to. And they said there's like some big bulls. So I'll rip a keep, bugle quick. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Well, you time to get back over there to that other stuff. There's a lot of tracks, deer tracks in this road. And some bigger tracks too. Got lots of different habitat types out here, and there's some oaks, fir oaks, what it looks like. And they're loaded plum full of acorns, but they're just not ready to drop yet. They're weighing the limbs down, but there's only a few of them on the ground. When those drop in the next week or so, though, there's probably going to be a lot of deer moving on to those. Second doe and two fawns. I think there's probably going to be a bunch of deer. There they go. They're skittish, man. They don't hang around very long. Buck, big buck. See him? Hard antler. That was a bugle, right? That's when I just heard a cow. Can you do anything remotely close to an elk bugle? No. <laughs> just heard an elk bugle, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna just try to give him a little screech. I don't know what it's gonna sound like. It's probably gonna be terrifying, but. I don't know how hard, how hard it's going to be to get one of the bugle back. Tommy Bugle was the first elk bugle I've ever heard. And we're in North Dakota, the last place I ever figured, Grant and I both figured we'd ever hear our first bugle. And the second time he was only 150 yards away. You can't make that up. I was filming it as a joke. <laughs> I was doing it as a joke. I had the mic turned up too. You try the cows, you gotta, we gotta play off each other. It's like probably just such low pressure. That's why, like, I was halfway joking, but like, I was halfway serious. So, like, we gotta give it a try. <laughs> what? I can't, and I'm going with Ted Miller at the end of uh, the month of September. And like, that was at 150 yards. I'm gonna like completely fall apart if something Dude. does that at 20 yards. <laughs> that was crazy. He broke all these little saplings off, just completely shredded them. Like that. That's above my head. Big ball. We found him. That's the bull that was answering us. Coming our way. What do you think? Good now. Now we have proof that we didn't edit that bugle in. I don't know if I would have believed it. Let's go find a buck now. <laughs> That's cool. We don't need to push 
finish our lap. We pulled up to a high spot here and we're seeing some deer. Haven't seen any bucks from up here yet. But this is all private fields that we're overlooking that butts up against the, the public way down in there. And apparently it's a good spot because a couple of local guys pulled in right behind us on this same road and were asking what we were doing in here. And they seemed pretty surprised that we came across this spot. They ended up backing off and going to, down the road to a different spot. Haven't seen anybody all day. Haven't seen anybody hardly at all up here. And then first spot we go to glass first evening here. We run into somebody. I guess we'll just see what pops out and then make a decision on what we're gonna do tomorrow. Depending on what we see, Dylan's down the road, glass in a different piece. So hopefully he's seeing some deer too. We're just power walking out just because I didn't figure we were going to see anything else and looked up and there's two bucks feeding there. They're just right over there. They're just kind of out in this open ground with a bunch of different new growth coming up. Be a spot we, I mean, we could get a tree, a tree stand in any of those trees over there and then there's a lot of ground options. So, so we've got at least two different bachelor groups located for tomorrow and hopefully Warp and them found something too. I don't know where they ended up going, but I'm excited to hear from them. Really big one, Greg. Where? Coming off the public. He's working that scrape right behind them. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's a lone tree right along the edge of the, right where they're at. If you look just to the right of it, there's a lone tree right in the fence line. And he's coming right, he's working a licking branch right under it. Big, big buck. He's coming out now, coming off the public. There's a deer back there running around and stuff. He's just to the left of it. Here he comes. He's out in the open now. There's a pretty nice buck that just came off public back there. Yep, real nice buck. Oh yeah, mature buck. Hey. All right. There he is. Listen to my bugle yeah, friend. Go, go back. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> so dumb. That wasn't bad. Though. That was better. <laughs> She's tall too. Wow. Yeah. That's a huge bull. I know. <laughs> That's a big bull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know he started walking at me. Yeah, he postured up to you. At first, <laughs> Jake is gonna throw down with this bull. <laughs> so that might have been the buck that I saw when he was working that scrape in there was big. Really? Like as soon as I saw his frame, I'm like, oh my, that's a big was buck. Was he working a licking branch or was he pulling yeah. the ground too? No, he was working a licking branch. Well, that's going to wrap up our first day here in North Dakota. 
Vindy made us chili. So we came into the camper and got a little bite to eat here quick. That was really good, by the way. Yeah, I had a pretty interesting day, though, between the elk and uh, the other hunters and finding a bunch of bucks. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sweet up here. Yeah, I'm pretty excited Ooh. about tomorrow. Well, thanks, guys, for watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe, give it a like, and stay tuned because the deer tour is rolling now. And I'm already tired. And it's not going to stop until <laughs> January. <laughs> He's going to get that single bevel war. Mm. Zip him.